Czech one too, Polish guy too, <laughs> and one from Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is uh, I'm gonna show some of the apps uh, that I developed: uh, Groovebox, Looper, and a sampler in the browser. AKA, I didn't have money to buy hardware, so I wrote software. <laughs> yeah. So what is my motivation? Is uh, I'm uh, I have a, a story which I did a couple of points here. Maybe <laughs> I, I, I put a timer so that I don't go too much <laughs> into that. Uh, but my motivation is, um, uh, yeah, exploration, uh, learning new stuff, uh, trying things with technology. And uh, the second part is sharing these things, jamming together. And as a performer, always uh, it's interesting to uh, build your own tools at some point. Uh, it's a little bit uh, yeah, nerve-wracking because there are a lot of moving parts and you have more stress, but at the end you ideally have more control also, which is kind of... Uh, well, what was that? Uh, 180 degrees, they cancel each other, like more stress, more control. Is like <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'll show first the. Uh, I organize some events uh, in uh, in Bulgaria, uh, jam sessions. I organize some open audio and Linux audio meetups there, uh, and this is uh, one of the jams uh, from uh, uh, one of the recent ones to kick it off a little bit with, hopefully some sound. Let's see in video. Oh, oh, it's it's loading from local host. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped the. I also wrote the. So I'm playing here with the guitar a little bit outside of the uh, the screen. This is with actual hardware. I have a Groovebox um, uh, Novation circuit tracks which I build uh, like a backing track. I looped uh, uh, some guitar parts on top of it. Uh, there are some other guys that are playing, bass player. Uh, the guy here, he uh, created a drum track on uh, a Volca. So we organize this type of uh, jams where we hook up different things together and see if we can make music. Uh, enough of that. Uh, I uh, recently I started uh, this with K KDN Live. I, I recorded this. I'll just show you a little bit. Uh, do you guys hear well? This is uh, with uh, different instruments. It's a traditional Bulgarian song. This is an uh, uh, African uh, drum, flamenco guitar two Bulgarian instruments and uh, uh, somebody there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, what time did we start? I think it was uh, 25, okay. Uh, so I experiment with different things and uh, at some point uh, I started developing these tools. This is a um, uh, presentation and one event, I think, uh, in Sweden, uh, where I'm presenting uh, the Jam Station, and uh, <laughs> there are some people that uh, really like to talk. But uh, I've connected uh, this to there was this uh, Mayo armband, which is like an accelerometer, and I've created uh, hooked it up to the um, to control the what is this to one of the effects. So I sequenced a um, uh, certain part, and then uh, I use this as a controller of the, the sound. So this is in terms of building my own tools and experimenting with them to see. This is another tool that I haven't brought, is the MPK, MPK Mini, uh, which I used to travel a lot with. And now it's, this is smaller, but it doesn't have uh, that much, doesn't have pads and knobs. So I, I saw that I couldn't control it uh, well with this hand, so I switched it. Uh, 
Yeah, so as an example of uh, experimenting, I think it's, it's enough. I'm trying to fit everything <laughs> into a time frame. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is uh, part of uh, my motivation. The timeline, I'm a kid from the 90s. I listened to a lot of electronic music back then. Uh, I had a Casio keyboard, which I played around a little bit. Uh, then uh, uh, era where I uh, found FL Studio. Do you guys see this? Cor yeah, yeah. I, I should show here, not here, because you can't see it. Uh, FL Studio was basically composing with a mouse. Uh, then uh, at the university, I learned some music theory, MIDI. Uh, a little played, uh, uh, learned better to play synths better. And uh, for the first time, I, uh, we used uh, Linux at work. And afterwards, uh, I think at some point at that time, uh, Ubuntu got released, and uh, I, I tried for the first time dual booting. And uh, after that, I had several years with uh, Linux Multimedia Studio. Uh, at some point, uh, I had to uh, put the... I think I'll do it faster because I'm jumping <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I found out Logic, uh, Jazz, uh, went to my first jam, uh, which was like free jazz thing. And I got hooked to, to jamming with other people. Um, at some point, uh, I became good enough uh, uh, to, to, to feel that I could write my own music software. And uh, I had several years uh, doing that. Uh, also, uh, uh, hooking up different uh, Linux audio apps together. And at that point, I went to my uh, first music tech fest. And I decided, OK, we should have something like that in Bulgaria. So I started organizing meetups there with some other people. Uh, if they're watching, hey guys. Uh, um, around around the pandemic, I think in March, just before everything closed, we had one open audio meetup, one Linux audio meetup, and uh, a jam. And afterwards, uh, everything uh, got killed by the pandemic, and that uh, moved me to after the uh, to some. Dowless focus. I got a corporate job because there was nothing to do, uh, basically, uh, and I bought some some gear so I could finally experiment with the hardware that I wanted to experiment. Uh, and I also went a little bit into more performing uh, with uh, what you guys saw in the previous slide. And the last couple of years, uh, or last year and this year, I be, uh, after the pandemic, I, I needed to to get out. <laughs> A little bit, uh, and uh, a little bit more traveling. Now I was in uh, Spain, and I'm studying flamenco, and I uh, took a, a plane, uh, and, and I'm here. I think it was fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the apps uh, themselves. Uh, the first day, the first app is the Jam Station. Is the the, the first one. Uh, I used to call it uh, Digital Audio Workstation before I know what a Groovebox is. Uh, but uh, it's uh, basically uh, the interface is inspired by uh, Fruity Loops, or FL Studio now. Uh, let's see if I can uh, load it up. To do some background music. Okay, so if we remove a lot of the, the, the stuff, then you would see the resemblance. So the, the really good thing about uh, FL Studio was that um, uh, uh, compared to all other uh, DOS, it you can just start making beats directly. So it's uh, for somebody that doesn't know how to use a DAW. You say, okay, what what if I... Uh, start clicking here and there, and uh, okay, let's maybe maybe we we play this. Up, oh. <laughs> I need a mouse. Just give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's uh, I always like when it's uh, it's rushed and uh, yeah. Uh, so you you hook something up and then okay, what if I put some things? Ah, cool. Uh, 
So I'll basically started with this uh, thing. I really liked uh, how um, Fruity Loops was approachable. Uh, and uh, I think I'm at that slide. No. OK. The, the, the original uh, uh, browser groove app uh, started with the sequencer. Uh, and uh, then I added this um, uh, the basic synth. Originally, it didn't have any uh, reverb, and it sounded very dry. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I started adding some things to the uh, effect chain. So I think maybe if can we zoom out, it's not the yeah uh, yeah. You guys can still see yeah. Uh, the the synth engine is uh, simple enough. It has two two oscillators, which can I can just get one. Uh, Maybe I can remove the reverb and the VCF. This is a basic tri uh, a triangle sound, basic square sound. So y you have uh, two oscillators, you have uh, some VCA. I it's uh, uh, basic synthesis 101. Uh, which I, I'm, I'm not prepared to, to teach right now, <laughs> but uh, in in, um, uh, in a sense, you you can uh, build your own sounds uh, with it to a certain extent. It's not the it's not a powerful engine, but it's uh, good enough to to, to start off. Uh, let's get back to it. So the uh, Y jam station because it's uh, when you uh, let's see if this is connected uh, afterwards. Uh, Spanner functionality, yeah. So it has the synth engine. Uh, it has a sample pack, which we might go to or not, depending on the time. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to. I, I need to connect uh, the keyboard. I think uh, Niels had a problem connecting his uh, MIDI keyboard uh, when he was testing it. It's because I assumed everybody would uh, would have. Uh, uh, MPK Mini? No, <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> uh, but let's see if I can connect it without disconnecting the uh, HDMI. Maybe I need to ref refresh. Uh, route. Do I am I missing some permissions? Let's see. Katya. Pam, midi through. Okay, usually it should be detected, but uh, I think uh, we've connected a lot of new things that uh, I haven't checked before. So, uh, I'm not sure. Let's see if this works. <laughs> uh, pam, pam. Works. So, uh, we create it. I see something. Probably need to make it a little bit more lengthwise. Uh, we have uh, the piano roll, we have uh, something like a session, so we're right now at the bass line. Yep, uh, you, you see the, the mouse pointer, okay. Let's record something. Ah. <laughs> I was feeling very confident with this, but no. <laughs> Let's do something. Uh. Ah.
yeah, more or less so you can uh, easy, easily uh, start building things uh, one on top of the other. Uh, it, it also has some other interesting parts. Let's see if I can hook this directly to the MIDI through. I think I opened the text. I'm not sure if this needs. Do you guys know this this thing? Some of you? Oh, no. it, it, it's kind of a synth, uh, FM synth that is modeled somewhat uh, like the y Yamaha DX7. So it uses also the uh, the. It can also load the, the patches there, but I just want to say that uh, this can be hooked uh, to software as well as hardware. I don't have a hardware here that I can hook it, hook it with, but hopefully this will be fine. Oh, I need to restart it, of course, because we restarted Pipewire. <laughs> not the best thing <laughs> but you see that uh, real time you can um, sequence sounds and connect it to other software this uh, uh, fluidly or uh, gives me to the next slide uh, the next next slide yeah uh, use cases quick quick sketch of things um, back track for practice and jamming um, rhythm exploration this is something uh, uh, what I really wanted because in Bulgaria we have uh, seven eights uh, as a time signature and also nine eights, uh, eleven eights, etc., etc. So I, I hope I, I won't uh, uh, kill it with this. But <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's. Uh, uh, it's rudimentary, groove boxy level, uh, but uh, I have big plans for it. No, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so now, now it's in 7 8, which uh, with this groove sounds a little bit strange, but uh, if you know what you're doing in 7 8 and I start from scratch, I can probably build something that sounds better. But as you see, you can explore rhythm, and uh, what it lacks is uh, currently uh, where, where I'm at. Baseline. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what I'm currently working on. Do I have a slide for this? Uh, MIDI clock centerpiece. I said that that you can hook it up with other stuff. Uh, current work, I'm uh, improving the piano roll interaction. Currently, you can only record, but I'm in the process of uh, making you select. Yeah, it's not perfectly <laughs> working. Uh, and moving around uh, and uh, using the mouse to, to add notes. Uh, other stuff that I'm currently doing with it. Uh, I have some issues uh, that uh, maybe you saw, maybe you didn't see. Uh, touch and uh, responsive interface. So the the idea is that I want also this to put this on the phone, so that when you want to go, you can just uh, sketch uh, an idea, and uh, at some point there will be also synchronization. But uh, touch interface is something that I'm currently working on, and think I have something here. Uh, how much time do you have, guys? <laughs> want to show also the other apps. Uh, so uh, this is a tablet. So take so if I play this, let's put it back to four fours. Yeah. Delete this. Yeah. These are my current works. 
Yes. Future uh, midterm, uh, I want to integrate some, some of the functionality from the other apps so that uh, we can have all your tracks and uh, better sample management. Uh, longer term, uh, I want uh, currently it's four tracks. Want to make more uh, uh, tracks and streamline the effect chain. I didn't show you that, <laughs> but you you have uh, VCF, you have uh, LFO and Reverb, which you can uh, play around. Uh, uh, later, if you like, um, and uh, an important thing currently, it's it saves everything in a JSON format. Uh, documents, music. Let's say save, and I restart it. Technically, crossing my fingers, <laughs> when I open this, should be there. Yeah. And uh, it's a JSON format, and I, it can al only be opened in, uh, in this app. But uh, th these are open standards, music, XML, and DAO project, uh, which is more recent, uh, which uh, should be uh, music XML is supported much more than DAO project, but DAO project, there are things to uh, those that use it. So this would be something that I'm looking into expanding this longer term. Uh, yeah, I showed the demo. <laughs> uh, these are the links. Uh, mo uh, all the apps are uh, on my GitHub account. Uh, it's um, uh, in in the speaker bio is a link to the to the GitHub, uh, and probably I also upload uh, uh, the, the presentation. So probably there will be some links uh, in the website for you guys to check later. Uh, GS Loop Station. It's uh, a very innovative naming. <laughs> it's basically uh, the looper in the browser. Uh, background, uh, it, it was inspired uh, by the boss uh, RC505. Uh, do, you, do you guys, have you seen this, uh, this tabletop looper that there was a beatbox battle with a <laughs> something like this? Uh, I really got inspired by this and I when I started working on that, I haven't touched it, and um, afterwards I, I also loved it. But uh, I was looking how they were using it and trying to uh, uh, reverse engineer uh, the mm, the interaction. In the meantime, I'll stop the jump station and put start the loop station. So uh, and uh, second app with a mega creative name, yes. Um, we have um, do, 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 do. some annoying things that you have to go through. Uh, I think if I do this and refresh, we managed. Yeah, now we have the inputs. It has four tracks. Um, and uh, also multiple instrument sources. Currently, I think uh, both of both the guitar and the um, uh, microphone are from the same in input, uh, but uh, with uh, changing some settings, I can uh, use uh, uh, I can put them to different sources. Uh, so currently, you see see them as this. But if I go here and instead of duplex, I change pro audio, it should be uh, separate sources. But I won't do that because uh, this currently works, and I don't want to <laughs> uh, yeah, mess it up uh, before testing it first. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is um, basically the interface looks very similar to the uh, RC505. I think I even uh, uh, took a picture of the, the controller here uh, and just retraced it with uh, uh, SVG. So uh, Inkscape, I think I used or something. No, I converted the picture to SVG and then removed the things that I don't need. So I really, really liked the <laughs> interface. Probably, I think I, I said I got inspired by uh, Fruity Loops now by uh, uh, Boss. I think uh, there's there will be some uh, suits coming. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, technically you can pick uh, the input. I think now this should be the default one. Yeah, this is the default one, so I don't need to change anything. I'll just go ahead with the with the demo. 
because uh, uh, 10 minutes I have or must? Uh, to, ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> what it is it doesn't have effects it just uh, uh, loops uh, four channels right now uh, and uh, potentially uh, you can hook up a couple of different instruments and record them I think the timing I, I, I worked a little bit and make the timing a little bit better because now I see that it's it's more synchronized at first I had to really s hear where to, to hit uh, uh, record uh, but yeah this is the loop station uh, what? Yeah, uh, background use cases. It's a semi-functional looper. If you want to to use a looper, <coughs> buy another one. Be uh, I mean, just for performances. But uh, this is uh, it's nice. Uh, I, I really like clicking this. <coughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's fun fun to click. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned that uh, you can uh, record several instruments. It would be really nice if I make it work uh, uh, adequately on a phone, so that uh, when you're practicing something, you can record things on top and uh, jam, uh, jam on it. <laughs> and yeah, future uh, more looper functions, effect chains. Uh, yeah, I mentioned the interface and the mobile devices, and the links also are on my GitHub page. Uh, and will be provided later. And this is the, the the loop station. So, because I was very creative with uh, names, the third app, it's not the same uh, as, as what it does, <laughs> but it's, it's not sampler, it's Zampler, <laughs> written in, in a very fancy way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, my inspiration for it is uh, um, uh, started okay. My inspiration for it, I'll, I'll, I'm loading it while I'm speaking because I, I don't want to, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't have time for it. Um, uh, yeah, inspiration for it is uh, the uh, MPC series by Akai and uh, the the Boss SP series. Uh, I, I happen all to own the Mark II of this, uh, but uh, it's basically I started at a hackathon. There was um, Abbey Road Studios organized some hackathons a couple years ago. They th then they w went to VR, and I was not interested in that. So, th but I was part of the first one, and there was this initiative, Audio Commons. Uh, how many of you know about it? Audio Commons. Uh, th this is uh, kind of uh, um, they, they try to create an interface that uh, aggregates different uh, uh, online sources for uh, uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, um, samples. So it it used to have um, uh, free sound. I think this was three thousand. Yes. 
Uh, it used to use uh, Freesound, Jamendo, and Europeana. Uh, and um, ah, this is how it looks. <laughs> um, maybe I can, here I need to, to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sample search, yeah. Uh, it, it has the, the grid, uh, the paths that you're used to uh, of uh, these hardware devices. And uh, it used to have uh, the connection, I think this year the, the website of Audio Commons uh, uh, got down, so they didn't pay it. I think at some point uh, they, they were having some grants uh, to finance this. Th it was several universities that were had this initiative. Sadly, uh, at some point, the, the money ended, and now also the, the website. So my plan for this is uh, I didn't have the time this week to connect it to the Freesound API directly, so it can still work. Uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, you can sample things. Uh, uh, you can uh, sample, um, um, yeah, sample things directly to the pads and uh, also uh, get some sounds from uh, sources and edit a little bit. Uh, there's uh, some basic editing, C currently only one feature, but uh, I'll show you, I think this will be a little bit easier that way. Illustration, let's see if it works without me touching anything. Plug and play. Nope. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Let's see now. Okay. And currently, uh, you can uh, um, crop the sound. Uh, I've added some things uh, that reverse, which would, would have been super cool if I had time to implement it before the, the presentation. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I added uh, some effect chain from uh, the Jam Station, so I'm, I'm trying to, to bring things from the different apps together. And um, I'll, I'll just uh, record two more sounds before showing anything. So we have the bass drum, uh, we need a, a snare. Just need to cook this. <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> I need more. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe less sound. More <laughs> <coughs> 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 or less. And uh, hi hat. Let's crop this. Okay. Now a little bit of performance. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as you see, you can also use the, the keyboard if you don't have a MIDI keyboard uh, to, to interact with it. It's really direct, and, and I don't know why uh, uh, there is, isn't for the hardware devices just the button record and go from there. Uh, you, you have to go every time several steps. Um, but this is, I, I don't want to bitch right now, <laughs> complain. Uh, direct sampling workflow, so you, you sample directly, then you can edit uh, the samples. Uh, not yet, but I'll implement it first with Freesound. Uh, and uh, my idea for this is uh, uh, I have different uh, samplers, and it would be nice to have one device that can manage my uh, sample library and uh, uh, put them in the format that the specific device needs, it in the folder structure that it needs, maybe in the file format. We'll see. 
these are the uh, my thoughts. I'm currently improving the editor. I, I, I added the, the crop this week, uh, and it's quite more useful with that. And uh, next week, hopefully, FreeSound MPI will be back integrated. Uh, Midterm, uh, it would be nice if, if uh, it can be sequenced. And uh, uh, what I miss really in samplers is like Roland has a sampler, uh, a looper, and they have a sampler. With the latest uh, SP404, uh, they added a little bit of loop function, but it's rudimentary to what it can actually be, and it, it's not like it's a new technology. Uh, but I want to, to be able to um, uh, use also this interface to, to uh, loop, uh, create certain loops that is, is just basically um, and now it's looping, and then I uh, add some, uh, maybe a, a little bit of guitar, uh, load some samples from the uh, free sound, and then I can just uh, jam or get to a jam session plug uh, uh, in. Uh, okay, do you guys need need a loop? <laughs> so uh, uh, it will be very easy just to, to 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 perform live and to plug into an existing uh, uh, setup. Um, Mid term, long term. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm, uh, I have really. Uh, um, I'm paying for the subscription for supplies, but I'm not happy with their service too much. But uh, their interface is not very good to to get the samples, so I have to download each of their samples uh, separately. And to get the ro uh, the um, the license, you, I, you have to request it. Uh, there is this um, lawyer. Um, uh, I'll. I'll, I'll there's a YouTube uh, lawyer that this with this type of uh, music law, and uh, she analyzes the uh, terms and conditions of different services, and it's it's a bit wonky with this. So we'll see. But uh, if there's some other uh, sample sources, um, I'll look to integrate it. Uh, I mentioned the media library and device management, and these are the links. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I was, uh, how, uh, did I uh, finish <laughs> early? <laughs> that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, do you guys have any, qu so we have time for questions. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, thanks. Uh, I'll definitely check these out. Um, uh, how are the projects saved in local storage in the browser or uh, in uh, local st no uh, I it's uh, currently in the session some things uh, could be stored in local storage uh, the only thing that uh, uh, the jam station allows you to save uh, the the state so okay uh, uh, I've written a framework. And in the previous uh, presentations, I, I also explained some of the technologies behind it. Um, uh, I, I, I was made uh, aware that this is more user-focused, so I removed all the technology background from my presentation. But uh, I, I created a framework, uh, and uh, I have a state machine. So basically, um, all of the, the apps' uh, uh, state can be exported as a JSON, technically. Uh, on it only works now for the, the Jam station, but Technically, we can do it also for the other apps. Yeah, but my question was more practical. Yeah. Uh, is it, are the projects stored on my computer or somewhere? On the computer. Um, okay, so, so, I need, really so I need to bring the same computer. I, try I can't access my session from another computer to the web. Well, th this might be one thing that uh, uh, this might have some commercial mm. viability because I if, if it's like an online service that mm. you can store your sessions there, mm. Then you can maybe subscribe to it and uh, store audio files there. Uh, and uh, to manage your sound library, it could be something like WordPress is doing, so they have their own and people can set up their own. I haven't worked in that direction yet. Currently, it's only local, uh, but uh, potentially this can be uh, expanded in that. Uh, if you want to, uh, w what I do is I have Nextcloud, uh, and uh, when I s save the JSON file, this folder is synchronized uh, between my devices, so I can open it in another device and just load the JSON file. So 
you can yeah, use it like that. That's workable. Yeah. I understand you're, you're doing everything in the browser uh, with uh, JavaScript and the server does nothing except serving the files? It's, uh, there is no server yet. It's, it's only because you need the, the HTTP to help get the permissions. Did you think about compiling this uh, in Electron? Yes. So you have an app and can access local files? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this was one of the things that I uh, was on the horizon and uh, also to improve the, the audio engine because uh, there are some limitations uh, like for the for the loop station uh, I'll, I'll uh, explain without showing because it, uh, uh, to uh, we, we have um, uh, a good setup because I, I hooked the audio from uh, this interface to the interface that goes to the sound system directly through Katya I don't know if you know this software. Uh, so we have uh, instant feedback. And uh, one of the limitations is uh, just going through the browser, there is too much latency. So if, if I hook uh, the microphone input to the output that goes through the browser, there's too much latency. It, it's not good for performing. So this is why I uh, usually get some something directly from the interface or uh, route it through the um, pipewire right now or Jack in the past. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> Sorry about compiling it as Electron, but we can yes. talk later if you have time. Yes, I, 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 I because I did a sim s not similar, completely different project, yeah. but with the same a API uh, as Electron. So. Yeah, I, I was uh, really. Uh, I, I did some uh, C coding uh, in in the past, uh, but uh, like the I don't know for me anything better to create interfaces than JavaScript at this point. Like uh, to create um, dynamic interfaces fast uh, with the, the the libraries that are currently available. It's a little bit uh, wonky, but I, I mentioned that I created my own. Library, but anyhow, th this is we're going to the uh, coding part. But yeah, I'm uh, uh, definitely something that I would like to, to explore. On your uh, loop station, one question. Um, I believe, as we saw from your demo, the most difficult part is getting the very first pattern or the first track right that it really loops nicely. Did you consider some mm, auxiliary tool like a metronome running in the background that gives you the, the cue for one, two, three, four, so that you start in time and end in time? So for, for the loops, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it. Um, I have a lot of uh, ideas uh, because I uh, used uh, the RC505 for for a bit. So uh, there, there's counting. There is also um, some uh, BPM detection that can be made out of the the loop, and uh, it can be more immediate. Uh, but uh, it can be improved in that direction. Yeah. Right now, you have to be a little bit careful to. Or practiced a lot. There was, a, yeah. Um, what are the pros and cons for integrating the looper and the sampler into the DA DAW? The DAW? Uh, uh, into the, uh, the 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 pros uh, is uh, so. Wouldn't that uh, kill uh, the other two apps? O or is it something like like oh? Oh, this is the yeah. This. I'm just opening this because I uh, it's where it's deployed. So uh, the the pros are um, the currently it's uh, at a groove box level, and uh, it's fine. So uh, like uh, devices like uh, circuit tracks, this is what they're doing. So I it's uh, it also they have two two MIDI tracks. So at that level it's fine, but. Um, mm if you really want to be uh, performant, uh, it wouldn't be bad to be able to just loop uh, audio besides everything that you do. So it gives you more tools to when you are creating a, a track or a loop or you're joining a jam session. Uh, it, it, you, you can do the uh, things directly with win app, wa one app. Why I still have the other two? Is because the, the interface is different. So uh, the, 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 the loop station is uh, focused on the loops. 
So um, there, there might be some features that are uh, there, but not in here, that are more prominent to when you are uh, to people that are used to that type of interface, and uh, vice versa. Uh, and uh, for the sampler, it's, uh, it's basically uh, you have a keyboard here. There you have pads. So it's a preference of how you um, the artist expresses their um, musicality or the interface that they're uh, um, ac uh, accustomed to. So you don't think it's possible to have not just the sequencer, the piano roll, but also the sampler interface there? That's the, that's the, the plan to, to, to add uh, uh, bits and pieces from the, the other apps. It can be one app that uh, fr from clicks switches between the three apps, but yeah, I it's, uh, it's also it, the things take, take time. So it's, it's uh, I want to make it more modular and uh, maybe some other people can create their own in interface on top of that, uh, and create their own uh, uh, um, effects or uh, synth engines, but uh, it's uh, this will take quite a bit of time and maybe more people than me. <laughs> to accomplish that. There was one, yeah. Oh, yeah. In one of your future perspective slides, you mentioned a, a door project. But what's behind this? Uh, door project, uh, I should probably uh, add it. So I think it's an initiative by Bitweek <coughs> and another DAO. Uh, I'm not sure. I forgot the... Uh, standards. I've uh, more or less for. Yeah, it, it's an uh, initiative between two DOS currently. That's to have a format that uh, is open format that they exchange their uh, projects between each other. So is it doesn't need to be converted technically. So the workflow between commercial uh, DOS then. Well, between yeah. commercial DOS, uh, Bitwig uh, runs on Linux. Uh, which uh, um, uh, I, I, I use from time to time. Uh, uh, but I it's good that they um, created this initiative because the format is open. Okay. So it can be uh, integrated in uh, Arduino. I'm not sure if somebody is here from, from them. But I'm also uh, looking to integrate it into my software. So it creates one common form like MIDI. So MIDI was created by a lot of commercial companies that wanted to sync their devices together. Am um, I of the impres impression that you um, introduced you as a musician and now you, you move to be a programmer? Both. Are you are you still both or are you having less time for making music? Uh, it's uh, the timeline part. So. Uh <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned, I, 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 uh, during the pandemic, uh, I, I got a corporate job, so I was coding uh, not for fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that uh, gave me my creative uh, um, focus to be on just playing music. And I played in a folklore band, in a rock, rock and roll band, and I started uh, playing different instruments, focus more on playing the guitar and also playing other instruments. I love music, so if I can build guitars, I would also build guitars. But it takes time, like everything. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to fit everything together. Like r uh, currently, my uh, lifestyle is more traveling. So uh, I used to bring uh, a couple of gear with me, like the um, uh, circuit tracks and uh, SP404. I don't have space for them now. So it's, it's a good opportunity to bring out uh, my old projects and make them better and just use this, uh, this type of uh, small interface to, to make music. So motivation to so in different parts of person's life there are different focuses so it, it, yeah that's it <laughs> all right then um, yeah thank you very much again thank you ah. You can check my GitHub uh, page, create issues. I don't mind them. Uh, there's the Instagram account, uh, which I put uh, my music. And uh, musictech.bg is the community uh, that I was trying to build and now is kind of in a not great state because of the pandemic. But uh, initlab is the hackerspace uh, in Sofia that I'm part of and we organize the events there. So if you go to these places, uh, 
you can get in touch with me and uh, also I'll be here these two days if you have questions. Yeah.